Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we're talking about the advantage, the plus side of INFP intuition. So what I want to show you in this video is as an INFP, don't think that you have weaker intuition than an INFJ or an ENTP. At least don't think that your intuition is only negative compared to those types. Recognize that you have strengths in the way you use your intuition that these types lack. So as an INFP, the first thing you'll notice is often INFPs relate to both NI and NE. So when you take cognitive function tests, you tend to rate pretty high in both NI and NE. What, I, what that means is you tend to agree with, and you tend to say, I can do NI, but I can also do NE. You tend to identify as both somebody who is creative, but also as somebody who can spend a long time theorizing and building a system or focusing on one idea. So you can both hone in on an idea and you can expand and research and explore multiple opportunities and possibilities. So INFPs are intuitive generalists. You could say INFPs are a jack of all trades of intuition. So you are good at both, but you are not great at either. That means an INFJ will out NI any INFP, and most INFJs will consider INFPs to lack intuitive focus and mental discipline. Similarly, ENFPs would consider INFPs to be a bit rigid, or a bit held back, or a bit too nitpicky to have high NE. So when talking with an ENFP, most ENFPs will say, hey, be more open-minded, expand, look at more possibilities, research more opportunities, see more patterns, think ahead, think more, consider more options. <laughs> when you talk to an INFJ, they will say, focus, discipline your mind, see the bigger picture, look at how things work together, look at the greater truth behind it all. So often you can get the idea as an INFP, okay, uh, I'm not disciplined enough, oh, or I'm too nitty, I, cannot, I, I should be more open-minded. And so INFPs can be on that scale of, oh, I should be more open-minded, and oh, I should probably be more focused. And of course, that's a contradiction. You are standing kind of at the gates of both of these forms of intuition, and you can use both, and that's your strength, and it's your weakness. By lacking a clear priority for NI or NE, by lacking clear priority means that means you are less able to formulate more grand hypotheses and ideas. And it also means you are less likely to engage in a big creative dialogue or to be dominant in a creative discussion about ideas. Often INFPs are people that can see all perspectives. So I can understand that point of view, but I can also see that point of view. And that person is making a good point when they say that, then they bring this to our attention. And I have not thought about that pattern before. That person seems quite interesting. That's kind of a cool idea. I would like to try that out. Often INFPs, they find themselves fascinated with and highly influenced by intuition. You could say they are extremely susceptible to, even more susceptible to intuition than an INFJ or an ENFP. And the reason is because INFJs and ENFPs tend to be intuitive dominants, people that tend to really specialize in one field of that intuition and hold high confidence and even aggression about their ideas. INFPs tend to be more receptive, more open-minded in the sense that they are more likely to consider other people's point of view. So if somebody else has a big theory, INFPs are usually the first to raise their hand and say, hey, that's cool, let's try it out. Often when INFJs are in conversations with other INFJs, there is a problem because both types tend to be very dominant and very aggressive about their own opinion. That means INFJs tend to be very sure of how their world works and how everything is fit together. So when talking to another INFJ, there's an issue. For me, there's an issue when talking to other INFJs personally because I tend to be so set on how I see things and I find it very difficult to entertain and consider their system, how they have considered everything, their bigger picture that they are talking about. Often it feels like we are having a two-way monologue where I am talking about my idea and they are talking about their idea. And of course that can be very fascinating, but 
uh, INFPs do have an edge in the sense that they are being more cooperative. They're more likely to say, okay, that's a cool system. And I wonder if I can put that system into my system. And I wonder if I could connect that with what I think. So when it comes to intuition, INFPs are more open. Of course, I am not saying INFPs are more open overall. I am clearly, I'm primarily saying you are more open when it comes to matters of intuition. INFPs can have very strong value systems and systems that can be quite rigid and systems that um, beliefs and ideas and feelings and values and interests and likes and dislikes that they are feeling very strong about. So they are very strong in who they are and their identity and they are very likely they don't like when other people try to impose their identity on them. So what INFPs have is they're very specialized towards FI, but they are very general about NE and NI. Being more general about it also means glossing over it a bit. So as an INFP, you can fall into the habit of starting up a creative discussion or project, but then falling off the wagon. So you get lost in the patterns, you get lost in all the jumps and hoops that you jump through, you get lost in the intuitive process, and you lose track of it while it happens. Often INFPs struggle to talk about or remember the ideas they have or to uh, keep focus about it. Other times INFPs are going to be a bit more fickle when it comes to ideas and creative discussions because they're gonna talk about something with passion and enthusiasm but then they're gonna forget it the next minute or they're gonna move on to something else. So as an INFP it can be harder to pattern surf or harder to really nail your mind to something or a project or an idea. So INFPs tend to feel a bit more lost in their intuition than INFJs or ENFPs. So what can you do as an INFP that an INFJ or an ENFP can't? Well, first you can out intuit an INFJ in the sense that while they keep going into this one big idea and keep connecting everything to that one idea, you can say, hey, maybe there's another idea that I missed. And so you can out intuit them because you can recognize that there are the ideas around there that they have completely forgotten about taking into perspective. How can you as an INFP beat an uh, ENFP? Well, while they are going over all the opportunities and all the ways a situation could work down and while they are brainstorming scenarios and going over hypotheticals, you as an INFP can say, hey, I'll take a step back and really think about all these patterns and okay, I'm done with all the research. Now it's time to try, really to take a step back and detach and think about how things really work and to really try to make something sense, make sense. So while they're still stuck in the research process, you are moving on to the theorization process. And this is why often um, INFPs and also to a high extent, INTPs, INTPs can relate to this too, make great researchers and analysts at the same time. So they're able to use and do a healthy amount of both and they show balance in both. It should also be said that uh, being a double intuitive in a sense, being an intuitive yak of all trades, that also means uh, having a weaker intuition than an INFJ or an ENFP. So while you are good at both, you are averagely good at both. That means you're not great at either process. And that also means on the whole, when you look at your own intuition, your own intuition as a whole is not a big, uh, it's not the primary factor of your mind or its decision making. It's not the primary reason why you make decisions about anything. It's a kind of a feedback to the decisions you make. It's kind of a, this is what I should do. This is what I should consider. This is what I should think about but it's not what I'm gonna actually do. And it's not the primary decision-making factor. So in the end, you will toss out all intuitive shields. You'll consider them and you'll say, this is what I should strive towards. But first comes my values. First comes my identity. First comes my belief. So your intuition is not that strong in the whole, on the whole scale of things, your intuition is not that strong. In on the plus side, your sensing is a bit stronger. That means uh, you are going to be and show more resilience when faced with difficulties and 
hardship, you're going to be a bit more resilient because you are stronger emotionally. Uh, when uh, asked to focus on something and discipline yourself and steal your mind and to really go through the details and really uh, think about and do things in a grounded and earthed sense, you're going to come out ahead. So you're going to show more motivation to study, to sit down and really study and to graduate and get a master's degree and finish up in school or uh, really sit down with all these things because you have more self-discipline and more self-control. <laughs> where an intuitive on average is a bit more lazy. So you have stronger sensing than the average intuitive dominant. And uh, that also means you're going to be more practical about your ideas. And often your ideas, the ideas that you have as an intuitive, double intuitive, intuitive jack of all traits, they're going to be more short term or small scope. That often means uh, INFPs, they are kind of uh, uh, the patchwork intuitives, meaning INFPs are the people that come up with these small ideas, these like, oh, that's kind of a cool, funky thing, and that's kind of a neat, small, new innovation, that's kind of a cool, new gadget, this kind of a cool, new project. But INFPs are more small scale in the sense that they will stop with this thing and they find it more easy to narrow down and say, okay, this idea, this particular idea, where the intuitive dominant is gonna say, let's make it big or let's make it broad. <laughs> so what an ENFP is going to say, let's do all these ideas at once. Or well, the INFJ is more like to say, let's do this really big project. The INFP is gonna say, okay, let's do these small ideas. So I have these six ideas and I'm gonna try to get them all down and I'm gonna try to make something with them. Uh, it might not turn out to be a lot, but I'll do some small things there and some small things there and that's gonna add up. So that was INFP intuition explained. So uh, let me know as an INFP in the comments down below, how do you feel about your intuition and how do you notice your intuition in yourself? How do you notice NI and NE in yourself? And have you noticed that you're actually quite strong in introverted intuition? And have you thought about what that means? Do you, what do you, what do you feel are the strengths or the advantages or disadvantages of having such an intuition compared to an INFJ or an ENFP? And if you like this video, of course, uh, feel free to share it and like it and subscribe for more updates to come soon. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.